Hi there, this is Ranjit from tech2us.com and welcome to the third Q&A session and I've got a bunch of questions and we're going to answer the same. We have got questions on graphic cards, again on some questions on Mac, uh, IV bridge processors and some Android phone solutions. So let's get on with it. And the first question is from John Smith 230 and he uh, asks us, can you suggest a graphic card of approximately rupees 10,000? For playing high graphic intensive games on a 22 inch monitor at a 1080p uh, with high settings. Uh, uh, do remember that uh, graphic cards in India are pretty expensive and this 10,000 uh, rupees is approximately about uh, $200 and uh, for about that price uh, uh, John Smith at 1080p resolution and with uh, high graphic settings you might not be able to play all the games at uh, high graphic settings with your budget because with your budget you can just get about uh, let's say uh, nvidia uh, 550 uh, uh, ti graphic card and though this uh, graphic card is good enough uh, you might not be able to play all the games at high graphic setting for a high graphic setting i would say that up your budget a little bit to about uh, 11,000 rupees and you and then you can get nvidia 560 uh, car graphic card and that should help you play most of the games at high settings the next question is from easy to cool and he asks us can you suggest nvidia based graphic card under 10,000 planning to upgrade my uh, pc i was thinking of uh, asus gtx 550 ti yes you can go with the asus uh, gtx 550 ti and that will be in your budget and the next question is from Sunny21892 and he asks, please suggest me a video card in the range of rupees 8,000 to 12,000. That's approximately US 7, uh, $170 to about $250. And in this range, you can get the uh, NVIDIA 550 Ti at the lower end. And uh, if you at about 11 or 12,000, you can get the NVIDIA 560 uh, graphic card or from ATI look for 6850 series. Also, you might be able to get it if you look very hard uh, the ATI 8670 series. So I hope that answers the question. The next question is from Krishna0586 and he asks us, Hey Ranjit, what's all this uh, IV bridge processors? I'm a little confused whether to go with the Sandy bridge or the IV bridge processor. Uh, the IV bridge is the next generation of processors by Intel. The current crop of processors that you get by Intel are known as Sandy bridge processors and the new upcoming range is known as the IV bridge and the IV bridge architecture is much more efficient than the Sandy bridge. It is on the 22 nanometer and I have made a detailed video regarding this IV bridge processor range. So just check out that video for all the details regarding IV bridge. And if you're uh, going to purchase a specifically a laptop, I would suggest that you just wait a while for the Ivy Bridge uh, based processors because the Ivy Bridge processors are very efficient processors. So uh, particularly you'll get a huge advantage in the terms of battery life and the graphic performance when these Ivy Bridge processors are used with the laptop. So I hope that answers your question. And, uh, and we have again some questions on the Mac and this is by DJ EZP. Why is Mac higher in price? Uh, there are actually two parts to this question. The first thing is that generally if you notice the most, let me talk about the most popular Macs. That's the iMac and the MacBook Pro. If you notice the these machines, the build quality of these machines is pretty good and the unibody design etc is next to none. You won't find these Macs to compromise on the build quality etc. So, uh, Apple naturally has to spend a lot more in producing these high quality uh, stuff. Again, that costs a little bit more. So uh, in terms of quality, Apple does not compromise. Let's take the example of the uh, display LCD panels used in, in these uh, uh, Macs. For example, most of the PC manufacturers use the cheap TN display, but if you notice the Mac Pros and the iMacs, they use the higher grade uh, IPS panels. So, Generally, Apple uses high quality parts. I do agree Apple does not use the best and the fastest parts, but generally they use premium parts. Hence, they cost a little bit more. And the second simple fact is that Apple likes to charge a lot more premium than PC manufacturers. So hence, Macs are a little bit more expensive. And I want to add one more point that many people do not consider that. Generally, if you resell your Mac, you will get a lot more money back compared when you resell your PC. For example, I'm using an iMac personally and my iMac is now almost uh, three and a half years old. 
and I'm going to sell it soon. But when I sell it, I'll get almost 40% of the price uh, when I sell it back. Uh, and I don't think so I can sell any PC after three years and get that price back. The next question is from GND Geek. And he asked me, hey Ranjit, I'm looking forward to switch to my first Mac. I was looking to buy an iMac. So when do you think new iMacs with Ivy Bridge will come out? Uh, the Ivy Bridge uh, uh, is going to launch pretty soon. I would say uh, around uh, April or May time frame. And I am also just assuming the new iMacs will launch during that time frame. And I highly suggest just wait a while and go with the new iMacs that will support the Ivy Bridge chip. The next uh, question is from Funkara and he asks us uh, and he wants to uh, do video chat uh, with Facebook and Orkut friends on his uh, Samsung Galaxy R that's an Android phone. Personally I'm, I do not use the Facebook or Orkut a lot on my Android phone so I haven't tested the Facebook app uh, so if you guys know there is a specific app for Facebook via which you can do the video chats and also for Orkut. Please share your experience in the comments below. Uh, I guess it will be helpful for everyone. The next question comes from Techno Dictionary and he wants to ask how can I know my monthly bandwidth? Uh, I have made a detailed video regarding this uh, how to monitor your bandwidth. Uh, just check out this video and I have also mentioned some free software that you can use to monitor your monthly bandwidth. The next question comes from ANRGKR and he asks which brand should I choose for SSD upgrade? I have heard SanDisk pen drives are generally faster than others. Is it the same for SSDs? Uh, I have never personally used a SanDisk SSD and generally SanDisk is not known for SSDs. Uh, the big brands that are known for SSDs are from um, generally the likes of Intel, Kingston, Samsung, OCZ or Corsair. These are the general reputed brands for SSDs. So and I personally am using a Kingston SSD and it's pretty fast. So I hope that answers your question. Please suggest me good phones in rupees 10,000 to 15,000 range and this is from Param 3023. And the thing is that you haven't mentioned me the platform Android phone or whatever. So first I'm going to be going to give you a suggestion for Android phone. On the budget range, that's rupees 10,000. You can check out the HTC Explorer. Check out this uh, video review that I have done. It's excellent for, for the budget. And if you up your budget for about 13,500 or so, you can get the Sony uh, Live with Walkman. That's a pretty nice phone. And for about 15,000 rupees, you can get the Motorola D5 Plus. That's an excellent phone. Uh, on the Windows front, you can definitely look at the Samsung W Omia. It's an excellent phone. It has a super AMOLED screen, front facing camera and it runs the Windows uh, uh, mobile OS. So these are some of my suggestions. The next question comes from Raghav Goyal and he asks me how to register an Android de device. Is it mandatory to register an Android device before using it? Does one need to have a Google ID to register an Android device or a Yahoo, Hotmail, etc. might work? Uh, the thing is, you can use your Android phone without registering it, but uh, your functionality will be severely crippled. You cannot use the Android marketplace. So I highly suggest that you register your Android phone uh, and you need some sort of a Google ID. It's not mandatory that you need a Gmail ID, but your email has to be linked with a, uh, uh, what do you say, Google ID to register your Android phone to get all the benefits like using the Android marketplace, etc. And this is the last question that comes from SUV Ojit. And he asked me which tablet is best, iPad 2 or Blackberry Playbook? I'm planning to buy the same after my exams, but I have never experienced a tablet before. Uh, the thing is that I am personally using both. I have an iPad and even a black book. Uh, but seriously, the biggest problem with the black book is that the selection of the app sucks. It's a good tablet overall. I have done a detailed review, so you can check out that video. But the selection of the apps on the black book is really bad. Even with the, the BlackBerry OS 2 update, 
uh, the selection of apps right now is bad so you, I would highly suggest that just go for the iPad 2. Now that the new iPad has just been released, the price of the iPad 2 has come down significantly. So I would say the iPad 2 right now offers an incredible value. I hope uh, that helps you. And these were the questions for the third Q&A session. If you would like that I answer your tech related questions, please post your tech related questions below. I'll be cho choosing those questions in the next Q&A session that will come in the next Friday. So just start your questions with the tag Q&A so that I know th I need to include them in the next Q&A session. Uh, thanks for watching this video. That's it for now. This is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and hopefully I'm going to see you in my next video.